Hello everyone and in today's video we are going to try and establish what HIV treatment is, how does it work and why it matters. And just in case if you're wondering why should you listen to me, I've been a pharmacist for 17 years and 14 years of that has been within HIV medicine. I have worked at four major centres in London that look after HIV patients. I've spoken to thousands of patients, answered their queries about side effects, how to take medication, drug interactions. And also I've reached a phase in my life where I just want to give back. So ART stands for antiretroviral therapy. It's the treatment used for people living with HIV. It's called therapy because it is long-term treatment plan and antiretroviral because it targets retroviruses like HIV. It is not a cure, but it allows people with HIV to live long and healthy lives. So when you start taking tablets for HIV, what happens is the virus that is in your blood eventually reaches to what we call as undetectable level, which means that the virus is still replicating in your body, but in such tiny quantities that it does not affect your immune system. And as a result, you see the immune system then finally starts to recover. And as a byproduct of that, it prevents illnesses and nasty infections. And it also prevents onward transmission to other HIV negative people. Now, these are the different classes of antiretrovirals that are available in 2025. And Think of them like a team of bodyguards that stop HIV at different stages as it tries to attack your body. So for example, fusion inhibitors, they basically stop the HIV from fusing with the cell membrane. And it's like blocking the handshake between HIV and your CD4 cells. You've got these two, NRTIs and NNRTIs. They are called reverse transcriptase inhibitors. They stop the virus from making copies of its genetic materials. <clears throat> then you've got integrase inhibitors. They stop the virus from inserting its own genetic material into your DNA. And then you've got drugs like protease inhibitors, and they stop new HIV virus particles from being properly assembled. So it's like breaking the factory that builds the new virus part. So together they block HIV at every step, making it really hard for the virus to grow. So just in case, if you're wondering, okay, out of all the drugs that you've mentioned, Abhishek, how do you decide which one to give to which patient? So what we do is we follow data. And through years of studies, what we worked out is that if we give combination of certain drugs, it seems to be very effective in not only bringing the viral load down, but keeping it down. So the way we work out is we would use a combination of two NRTI drugs and one NNRTI, or we would do two NRTI drugs and one integrase inhibitor, or we would do two NRTIs plus one protease inhibitors. Okay, now there are other drug combinations that we can use as well, but in over 95% of the time or 99% of the time, these are the combination what we use. And this has been a gold standard since 1996. Well, some of you might be thinking, why do you have to pump my body with three drugs in one go? Why not just give one or why not just give two? Why do you have to do three? Well, the reason being that in the past we tried that and we failed. And if you notice in this graph here, this was in 1987 when the first medication came in, which was an NRTI. We gave it and what we saw was viral load in this blue line. It dropped, it stayed low, but then it started to creep back in. So it didn't work and the virus basically became resistant to the one drug. In 1994, then we gave two drugs. And then what we realized was the virus dropped further, stayed low for a tiny bit. And again, as you can see in the graph, it started to creep back in. But then in 1997, when we gave three drugs, a combination of what I was saying, two NRTIs plus a protease inhibitor, 
what we saw was remarkable. So if you notice this viral load, not only it dropped significantly, but it actually continued to stay suppressed. And that is when HIV essentially became not a death sentence. It became a treatable condition that when you take the combination therapy, not only the viral load went down and it stayed down. And that is why the triple therapy stayed as a gold standard for treating HIV globally. This is the timeline of all the drugs that have come into play so far and became mainstream and it got the license. So we started in 1981 when the first AIDS case was reported and from 1981 till 87, literally there was no drugs. And then Zidovudine came, it was the first NRTI. And then later on, multiple other NRTIs came and together they weren't performing well, they didn't really give us good outcomes. And then from 1996 onwards, when we got different class of medication like protease inhibitors and NRTIs and eventually integrase inhibitors is when we saw the treatment being successful, more tolerable, and people started to live longer. Now, just because you have to take three medication to effectively treat HIV doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take three tablets. So one of the exciting thing that came out from HIV is that we started creating something called single tablet regimens. So within one tablet, we started putting in multiple drugs, so three drugs. And hence, what you see on your screen are these combination therapies whereby you only take one tablet, but your body receives two to three drugs. So the most common one you can see is Bictarvi. This is mainly used in the Western world in Europe, in, in North America as a first line treatment. So it's a combination of two NRTIs and one integrase inhibitors. Um, you have Eviplera, which is again two NRTIs plus one NNRTIs and Odefsi, Genvoya, Del Strigo. They're all triple therapies. And then you have two medications here, one Dovato and one Jaluka. They have two drugs inside them and they are mainly used as a switch strategy, although Dovato in certain cases can be used for treating newly diagnosed patients. Now, apart from Europe and North America, TLD, which is a combination of tenofovir, lamivudine, and dolutegravir. This is the most common single tablet regimen that's prescribed across the rest of the world. So in Africa, Southeast Asia, South America, this is one of the most favorite medication. And again, it's a combination of two NRTIs and one integrase inhibitors, and it is available under different brand names. So Viropil, Acryptega, Zapavir, Siponec, Trilavir, etc. Now, I cannot stress this enough, how important it is that once you start taking your tablet, you take your tablet the way we tell you, which is every day, more or less same time every day, because what we want is steady levels of drug in the body, and that is what keeps the virus suppressed. That is what prevents you getting resistant to the virus, and that is eventually what's going to keep your immune system strong. It's also important to understand that what could happen if you don't take the medication the way we tell you to, and if you keep missing your doses. So on the left-hand side of your screen, this is what we ideally want to happen when you take the tablets. So if you take your medication regularly, what happens is here, you took your tablet and the level of the drug goes up, and then obviously it goes down. And as it goes down, you take your tablet again. It's the following day and then the level goes up and then it comes down, then you take your tablet again. And you want a steady level of your drug in your body. And that is what prevents any kind of complication and resistance. But now look at the second graph. And this is where you took your tablet here and then you got a nice peak, it came down, then you took it again, nice peak and then it went down and then you stop taking your tablet 
So what happens is that the drug doesn't just disappear from your body, the levels become very low and it stays low for a few days. And this is a very risky time because this is when the virus will start to replicate. And the virus that replicates in low level drug will become resistant to it. So eventually when you correct your adherence and you start to take your tablets regularly, you're not going to see these peaks. You're actually going to keep seeing, although the level is up, but the virus is not dropping. And that is what we mean when we say that the virus has become resistant. And that's when we will need to change a medication and it limits your treatment option. Now, quick thing about side effects, like any other medication in the world, ARTs also have side effects. Side effects are your body's way of saying that it's getting used to the medication. And most of the side effects are prevalent within the first two to four weeks of you starting treatment. And the side effects do die down once your body gets used to it. Now, just because there are loads of side effects listed in the patient information leaflet of your antivirals, it doesn't necessarily mean they're all going to happen to you. Okay, each body is different. People react to drugs differently. So I wouldn't worry too much about side effects. I would start taking the tablets and if you have any side effects that are messing up with your daily to daily life, your personal life, your professional life, the advice would be to contact us and let us know. And what we will do is we will teach you or tell you how do you manage those side effects? Or if we can't manage it, then we can provide some other option. But the take home message is to not stop the treatment just because of side effects. HIV treatment isn't always one size fits all. Sometimes doctors may need to change your medication to keep things working smoothly. So it could be because of side effects. If the meds are making you feel unwell, we look for options that are more gentle on your body. It could be because of drug interactions. If you start taking other medication like for blood pressure or cholesterol or diabetes, we may need to adjust your HIV meds so that they don't clash with each other. It could be for long-term safety. So some drugs can affect the kidneys, the bones or other parts of the body over time. So we may May need to change them to protect your health and sometimes it could just be a lifestyle fit so if a new treatment is easier like fewer pills or fewer doses we might switch to help you to stay on track with your treatment now long acting injectables is just another example of how far we have come within the hiv treatment landscape this is a game changer for people who are already stable on HIV treatment. Instead of taking a daily pill every single day, you basically take two injections every two months. That's just six times a year. But here's the key. You have to stick to the schedule because missing an injection can increase the risk of virus coming back and becoming resistant to the drug. So while it's freeing in one sense, it still requires commitment from you and regular check-ins within your clinic. In my opinion, this option is perfect for people who find daily pill a hassle or who just want a bit more privacy and flexibility. But it's not for everyone. You need to already be undetectable and stable on antiretrovirals. Another unfortunate issue with this is that this regime is currently not available globally. So for instance, country like India, it's not available. But hopefully with better infrastructure and as this drug becomes cheaper, it's going to be available in more and more places. So we're getting to the end of this, but guys, the meds we use called ART are honestly life changing. They are safe, they work really well, and they help you to live a full, healthy life. But the key is to taking it every single day. And that is what keeps the virus under control, which means that you can't pass it on to others. And if you're not feeling great on your medication, just say something early. And there are options, but it's all about finding what works for you the best.
So stick with it, ask questions, and don't go through it alone. You've got this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate you being here. And if you found this helpful, go ahead and hit that like button, share it with someone who might benefit from it, and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos on HIV and sexual health. And if you've got any questions or if you take ARVs or if you're wondering about side effects or anything else we've talked about today, please drop them down in your comments. I do read comments and I do try and respond to it whenever I can. And if there is any topic you'd like me to cover in the future video, please let me know as well, because this channel is here for you. And just a quick but important reminder, this video that I made is here to help you understand your treatment better, but it's not a replacement for advice from your doctor or your HIV team because they know your case better. They have your blood tests and they have your entire health history. And that is the most important guidance to follow. So please don't make any changes to your medication based on anything that you've heard here on the video. Always speak to your doctor first. So stay informed, stay empowered, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, folks.